For as long as I can remember, they've been telling us to enjoy it while they're young, but our days are filled with chaos and stress and cooking and endless laundry piles. Where's the time to enjoy it? Yeah, that's what I always thought too. There's so much I have to do. When do I find time for peace and joy and happiness when I barely have time to sleep? Mama, it's time to make shift happen. You can be a happy mom. If I can, you can. Trust me. I've been a mess. I've been depressed. I've been overwhelmed. I've been to the bottom of the pits. And I've risen. I've grown. I've bloomed. And it all started when I realized I didn't have to anything. I get to. It is my privilege and my honor and my divine responsibility to be the queen of my home. It's not a burden. I'm not a burden. I'm in charge. I'm the ruler. I'm the chaos coordinator. I'm the calm in the storm. And so are you. Come with me. Let's rise, mamas. Adjust your crown. Accept your responsibility. Change the effing world together. It's all in the way we choose to see it. I'm so glad you're here, friend. You're listening to Meant to Bloom with Brittany Clarkson. Hello, my beautiful friend. Today is such a special day around here, okay? June 6th. Ah, wow. It's my one-year podcast anniversary for this show. Uh, Yeah, that's so exciting to me. Um, we we launched as I Get To, which is a funny story. If you've been around for a long time, Meant to Bloom as a podcast hosted by me has existed for two years. But last year I relaunched, rebranded, renamed, and I really felt like I knew what I was doing. Um, the whole first year I just I felt like I was learning how to podcast, how to talk through a topic. Um, I was transitioning from a blogger to a podcaster the first year. So I relaunched, started a whole new podcast, had a whole new name, and a few months in, I think it was episode 45, I was like, "Mm, I'm not feeling this name anymore, and I took back the Meant to Bloom name. So this podcast, Meant to Bloom, has been around for one year today. Episode 1 aired June 6th, 2022. Um, Wow, it's been a year. Like, one year, 88 episodes, 19 reviews, over 4,000 plays, and I have had hundreds, hundreds of listeners and so many of you women just reaching out and letting me know that I have touched your heart and changed your life. And I am so grateful for every single one of you. Like, I wish I had time in the day to just devote myself to giving you so much gratitude. But if I had all the time for that, I couldn't create content and I couldn't, you know, live my life the way that um, the, the way that I want to live it. I couldn't be the mom I want to be if I took all my time and poured every second into you guys. I wish I could, like if I could clone myself and just have one clone of me constantly reaching out to you guys and responding to you guys and all about you. I, I would totally do that. Um, but I juggle my time as well as I can. Anyways, we're one year in and I think it's so amazing. Like, I have a lot to say to you today. All right. I have a lot. A lot of, yeah. We're going to try to stay on topic, okay? My kids are here. They are distracted for a minute. Let's see if I can keep it that way. Um, but all of this, all of Meant to Bloom has happened because I chose to put my past to death. I chose to put fear behind me. And I chose to show up for the woman who feels like her voice doesn't matter. All right, I've had a lot of conversations with women who are just impressed by what I've done. And let me tell you, it's not that impressive. I haven't done a big thing. I've done a lot of tiny, tiny, very scary things. I've taken chances and I've taken baby steps that have gotten me here. And my goodness, you could do it too if you really wanted to. Um, And I'm happy, like reach out to me and I'm happy to share all my you know resources and things and you know if you even want me to help you out I'm down for that we can figure something out there but anyways today is my one year podcast anniversary and it's also special because this is the first podcast that I'm recording in my new home all right if you've been with me this whole year we've been trying since January to like find our new home 
and we really don't like moving. We have a lot of stuff. My husband's got a construction business that has to come with us. We have lots of outside things. Lot, it, you know, moving is a big deal for us, okay? Um, it's not as simple as when we first got together and we were like transitioning from an apartment, two apartments into a house. Like it was so much easier, so much more simple. Um, now we're <laughs> 10 years in, three kids in, two businesses in. It's a lot to move. We have made so many trips and we moved 40 minutes away from our house. So many trips. And my kid's still in school back in the other district for the next two weeks. So I'm still making 40 minute trips every single day. Um, it's exhausting. It's really tiring, but it's worth it. And I'm so excited, so happy. This is like, it's finally happened. I'm I, the, the sale went through. We... We own the home. We are moved in. We are living here. And there are times when it felt like it just was not going to happen. This is the third home we put an or we put an offer in on. So third time's a charm, right? And I'm so glad. I was bummed when the first two didn't work out. Really bummed. But I held on to the hope knowing that God's rejection is my protection. And oh my goodness, it was. Because, wow, this... This home, this property, this area is so much better than what we originally thought we wanted. It's so much better. And it was here the whole time is what was what's crazy. Like, <laughs> we thought we wanted something else, so we weren't looking at this one. And we also, I think, in a way, we saw it in the listings and we're like, that's not the type of house we're going to live in. That house is like, you know, we're not that kind of people. That house is too good for us. And the more we looked at other houses, the more we found problems with other houses, the more we're like, no, we need to just be brave and uh, level up and believe in ourselves and move into the house that feels kind of uncomfortable. But now that we're here, like it feels so right. Like it doesn't feel weird to live here at all. It doesn't, it's crazy. Um, but enough of the real estate and the home stuff. Let me tell you, let me tell you, this is such, okay, this week is full of important dates and times. So what I really wanted to talk to you today, I mean, it's the one year anniversary of the podcast. What started this whole podcast was something where the anniversary is coming up next week, um, June 12th, 2020. Oh my goodness. It's almost been three years, three years since the day I wanted to end my life. Three years since motherhood and mental health were just too much for me and I couldn't do it all and I was so broken and so sad and just didn't believe in myself at all. That day, I've told you guys about this day if you've listened to episode six, I went into detail about the day I almost ended my life and how my mindset fixed everything, it changed everything. All right, but let's go ahead and chat about that again because there's been a development. Um, there's some things I've learned since then that are really interesting plot twists, um, and I want to share those with you. So buckle up. Let's go. So the day was June 12th, 2020. Um, my youngest kid was, what, three months old, four months, five, six, four, four months old. Got to do the math. He was born 2 to 2020. He was four months old. And I'd already been isolating since November because my midwife, knowing that I was about to give birth in February, she didn't want me to be bringing illness in the house because, you know, it's my third baby. I had two toddlers or a toddler and a preschooler. And she was like, you don't want to be sick when you go to give, ba go to give birth. Um, so just try to limit your... You know, try to limit socializing, try to limit going out, try to stay home as much as possible. So starting in November, I'm staying home as much as possible. Then in February, I have a baby. So we got to stay home for six weeks to, you know, we just, we just do that. We, we limit, limit socialization for six weeks uh, to help the baby's immune system. And, and I don't know if there's science to that really. That's just what we've done with all three of ours. Um, it felt comfortable, felt good. You know, I didn't want to do anything for six weeks. Like I was, was recovering. Um, I just wanted to be with my baby. So that's what we did. 
So that six weeks rolls up and it's March 13th, 2020. And now everyone has to stay home for two weeks, etc. cetera. Uh, we all know what 2020 was. And I think we just try not to talk about it and we try to block it out and we try to just pretend it didn't happen. Um, that was crazy. It was insane. It was really bad for a lot of our mental health. Um, and by June of 2020, I wanted to end my life. And I really thought that was, that was the best possibility. And I've, I had struggled with depression for 15 years at that point. Um, like since young teenhood, like eighth grade, I think is when I started really developing depression and I didn't know what it was until after I'd graduated high school and went to college. Um, and then I was like officially diagnosed and put into therapy and put on antidepressants and we started figuring out things and I started exploring that and studying that. And I'd gotten myself, like I had learned a lot from so many different therapists and self-help books and motivational speakers and, you know, per personal growth experts and all that. Like I learned a lot on how to mend my broken heart. I was learning how to build ladders to get out of this pit of depression that I kept getting into. And so I kept getting in the cycle of like depressed and really low and wanting to end my life. And a lot of the times I, I just, I wanted to die, but I wasn't going to do anything about it. And then I would just come out of the depressive episode and everything would be fine. Like I'd start sleeping better and drinking water or something. And everything would just be fine and, you know, the feelings would go away. So I didn't think about it again until the next time depression rolled around. Okay? June of 2020 was different. June 12th. This is when I wanted to end my own life and I made plans and I was going to go through with it. That is like the only time I was really going to. And it's the only time I really made the decision to stay alive. The other times I just kind of put off making the decision and then I felt better, but I never really decided I want to be alive those times before. This time, I chose to stay around. And I knew that me staying around was going to mean I had to change things. I had to stop building ladders to get out of that pit of depression. And I had to start building bridges to go over it. I had to start watching my steps. And I had to... I had to stop creating a life that made depression easy. Like I had to change my habits. So many of my habits were related to symptoms of depression, like bad sleep and bad personal hygiene, um, eating bad foods. My, my habit was to do those whether I was depressed or not. And so I had to change those habits and just simply forcing myself to take a shower when I didn't want to making it a habit that I take a shower every single day, no matter what. That helps so that when like the chemical depression or an emotional depression tried to come in, my lifestyle didn't make it easy for that to take root. It didn't make that, it just made it so much easier to handle. And now when depression comes in and I can feel like my body's just wanting to act depressed, like I can feel that, you know, like I can feel anxiety even though it's not in my thoughts. I feel it in my body. I can feel the depression coming in my body even though it's not in my thoughts anymore because I fixed those negative thought patterns that were constantly bullying me and pulling me down. I fixed that and I keep an eye out for that all the time because I made mental health a priority. So now whenever depression tries to come in, it's like I take a day for self-care. I take a day to take things easy. And I go to all of those mental health habits, the positive self-talk, gratitude, doing things that feel good for me and reminding myself of my value, like as a human being, my worth, my importance to others. I just, I take time for myself that day. And in a day, it usually passes. It's usually never two days. And it used to be two to six weeks of feeling like crap all of the time. And it's it's just so weird to be in a different place now than what I was before. And I'm so, so grateful for it. And I do want to share with you some of 
some of how I do that, okay? I have three main points that really changed my life, okay? So let me tell you, because this is important. This is going to come up. Um, that day that I wanted to end my life, my husband came home from work and it was raining. And I just, as soon as he got home, I was under so much stress and so much anxiety and it just felt like such crap. I just kissed him, kissed each boy, and I took off out the back door and I went for a walk in the woods in the rain. I remember wearing my rain boots and my, my Eddie Bauer rain jacket. And I had this absolute Bella Swan moment of laying on a log in the rain crying because I didn't know what I was going to do. I wanted to end my life, but I didn't want to leave my kids. And it was knowing that I'm the right mom for my kids that helped me hang on. But here's one other thing that was so stinking important about that walk. Okay. Because I went on a walk and before I, you know, I wanted to end my life the whole time I was out there. And then I'm going on this walk. And I see on the ground, just off the trail, a dead stellar jay, okay? The stellar jay is my favorite bird. It is beautiful. They are this deep blue with this black head. They're in the crow family, so they're about that. It's kind of like if you had a crow, but it had like a cardinal's little feathers on its head, and then it was deep, like rich, like very vibrant, beautiful blue. They are my favorite bird. They are... They're just beautiful, and I love them so much. I've always loved them. They've always been my favorite, and I saw one dead on the trail, and it was, like, rotting out, filled with maggots, and it was disgusting, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I don't want to end my life. I'm not ready to be that. I'm not, I'm not ready to be, you know, worm food. I have a life to live, and it was then that I, you know, started crying and I had the Bella Swan moment because I'm like, well, what am I going to do? I can't keep feeling this way and stick around. Like, I can't, I can't keep letting this happen. But also, like, I can't leave my kids. One of the phrases that saved my life is knowing that I am the right mom for my kids. And I'm the best mom for them. So I had to learn how to make life bearable and even enjoyable that if I'm going to stick around, things had to change. And I took action because I knew what to do. I'd been, I'd been mending my broken heart for so long. All I had to do was start practicing mentally healthy exercises and practices every day, even on the days that I felt good. And that that is what was going to lead me to change. I wish I could share absolutely everything I did with you in one episode, but we don't have time for that because there's so much. There really is so much here. Okay. And I want to tell you the things I'm going to tell you right now are just this, this, uh, just a quick little snippet of what's in the happy mom method. Okay. I created the happy mom method for me and I made it in a way that I can share with you. Okay. These are, like, this is my step-by-step -step process of how I got from where I was, wanting to end my life, hating the home I was living in, hating everything, just being negative and pessimistic and beating myself up every single day, convinced I wasn't good enough for anyone or anything, that I had no value in my life. This is, this is all of the little things I did. I didn't do one big thing. I did a lot of tiny things. And it's all of these things put together that brought me where I am now to a place where I am the founder of Meant to Bloom. Because my goodness, I believe women are meant to bloom. I think there's more for us all. And I am, you know, known in a digital space as the happy mom. I wrote the happy mom brain. I created the happy mom method. Like if you told me five years ago that this is who I'd be now, I would not have believed you. But here it is, my step-by-step -step process. It's the Happy Mom Method, which is made up of three different um, programs right now. And it will be another one in the future. I promise you. I have one on my heart. I just, we're going through a lot right now. I don't have time to create it yet. But it'll be there in the future. Um, and I'm really excited for that one to come because it is the next step beyond what's already in there. But I have to tell you, it's Unblock Your Joy. I'm going to talk to you today about Unblock Your Joy 
that's the first course in the Happy Mom Method. And I'm going to tell you the three biggest key points that that, that course is going to focus on. Um, it's so much your mindset. It's so much what you choose, how you choose to show up and how you choose to live your life. Okay. And then the second course in that is love your home. And this is so meaningful to me because I just moved out of the home that made me create that course. Like I hated that home. I thought it was going to be my dream home. We were going to renovate it. And we moved into that home five years ago, like from a week from now, five years ago is when we moved in there with all of these big dreams to renovate and everything. And those dreams fell apart because other dreams other dreams came up instead we decided to pursue other things and I could be sad that we never renovated that house but there's so much perspective shift that had to happen for me to realize you know what instead of constant DIY projects and fixing that house I chose to fix myself I chose to have a third child I mean I had two babies in my house we moved in I was eight and a half months pregnant like the day my husband hooked up the shower so that we didn't have to go back to our old house to shower, the day he hooked up the shower is the day my second child was born. So yeah, that's a little perspective right there. And then we decided to have a third kid. And then my husband bought a business. Um, He bought a construction business. And then I started meant to bloom. And I did all of my healing and I became a totally different person. And I'm showing up differently now than I ever did before. We grew a lot in that house. Like the house was a fixer upper, but we ended up fixing up ourselves in so many ways. Like I feel like I was the fixer upper and I've been fully renovated. Um, So I'm not even sad that we didn't do that. And we're finally today, I'm recording my first episode in my brand new home. That five years ago, if you told me I'd be here, I would not have believed it. I wouldn't have. And yet here I am. You can do so much in the next five years and all it takes is a small, simple step in the right direction because you know what? God can't guide you if you're not moving. Just take the first step and the rest of the staircase is going to start showing up one step at a time, one thing at a time, one scary little baby step at a time, whether that's in your personal healing or starting a business or podcasting or you know, starting a mom group or having another child, whatever it is, like one small step is going to get you where you want to go. And you're going to be there before you even know it. If you keep focusing on those small, tiny steps. All right. So love your home. It's all about the heart behind how you show up in your home. That's not a course that's all about, you know, cleaning and decorating and decluttering and organizing it's not about those things but I'm definitely going to teach you a little bit about each of those just a tiny bit of each the heart of that course is literally about loving the home you're in even when you you really hate the house and I'm I'm just so excited to share that with you that's part of the happy mom method because I mean how much of a happy mom can you be if you hate the house you're living in And if you can't show up with love as like a homemaker, what are you even doing? You're just a servant then. Like not with a servant heart, but with this servant mentality. You know what I mean? Where you hate your job. That kind. Um, We don't want to hate our jobs as stay-at-home moms, as homemakers, whatever. Like it's not something you can afford to hate doing. And if you hate doing it, oh my goodness, you you need to like hire a nanny and get a, get a real job or something, you know? Like not that it's not a real job. You know what I mean though, right? Like you need to work outside the house if you really, really hate being at home. Or you need to learn how to love being at home. Those are kind of the only options. Because I'm telling you from personal experience, if you hate being at home, if you hate this job of motherhood, of homemaking, you're not going to survive it. Like as you are, you're not going to survive it. Either you're going to end your life or you're going to change and you're going to grow and you're going to do something about it. Those are the two options you get. You're not going to be able to live a sustainable life 
if you hate what you're doing. I, I have seen that too many cases. I've experienced that myself. <laughs> All right. So let me tell you these three big tips before I go any farther on any other tangents, okay? Let me tell you how I changed, like, I was a toxic person. I was a jerk. I was just so negative all the time. I was a bully to myself. And let me tell you how I changed that and how I started being able to show up with love. How I started being able to unblock the joy that was potential in my life. There was so much potential for joy. There was so much blessing around me and I was blocking the joy. I was focusing on anything negative. I was making myself feel bad about things that weren't even in my control. I was full of guilt, full of shame, full of hatred. I was convinced that nothing could go my way and that, you know, nothing would ever go my way. And here's how I changed that, okay? The three things. Number one, positive self-talk. Okay, I had to stop bullying myself. I started, you know, using power statements and affirmations and mantras. And I started learning how to embody love for myself. I had to learn to love myself and to find my own worth. What I really did, the biggest exercise in this part, was I took the negative thoughts I was having, the specific negative thoughts, and I flipped them and I reversed them and I created an affirmation that had a big impact on my heart and had a lot of meaning to me. And I started using that. Every time the negative thought came in, I started fighting it with the positive thought. And it took a lot of practice in the beginning. And now, now it's just second nature. It's so easy. I don't even have to do it on purpose. I catch myself thinking that I'm not enough. I catch myself having this thought, my husband's going to leave me if my dinner is bland. Like, God, it was such a stupid thought. I, like... I legit wanted to end my life because I thought my husband would leave me because chicken, because I didn't season the chicken. Like, my husband doesn't care. He doesn't even make a big deal of it. He doesn't even say anything. Like, if I make a crappy dinner, he just, he thanks me for it. And that's it. And I'll sit there and just, I used to sit there and just feel so guilty and so much shame and feel so stupid for, you know, ruining dinner when he literally did not care. He didn't care. And I had convinced myself, I let myself spiral with these negative thoughts and these, you know, illogical, irrational, you know, thought patterns. I, I let myself convince myself that I wasn't good enough to be his wife and that he was going to leave me. And I did that with every area of my life. Convinced myself I wasn't good enough and something bad was going to happen because I didn't do something perfect. I don't know if you ever experienced that. But that was negative self-talk. When I talk about negative thoughts, that's what I mean. Just spiraling out of control with your thoughts. And so I started using affirmations. And it's not that I used affirmations in the mirror in the morning. It's not that I, you know, just journaled them out. I mean, those things do definitely help. But I took the root of what my negative thought was that thought that would start me on this, on the spiral out of control. The thought was always that I'm not enough. So I had to convince myself that I am enough. I had to find evidence to convince myself that I'm enough. It took a lot of journal work. But I put so much meaning behind that phrase, I am enough, that that affirmation meant something to me. And I could remind myself that. And it would keep me going. Okay, number two is gratitude gratitude oh my goodness and I'm not talking about morning gratitude lists you know if you've listened to me before you know I am those don't help me so just think of three things you're grateful for in the morning that doesn't help me what helps me is to take the thing that is annoying me the most frustrating me the most stressing me out the most take that thing or person and feel grateful for it find reasons to be grateful for that Find the blessing in the burden. Shift your burdens into blessings. Okay, because everything happens for you. It's not against you. It's for you. It's for your good. 
So practice gratitude for even the things that feel frustrating and negative. Find something grateful for about those journaling works or just reflecting on it as you go for a walk, meditating on it. Just think grateful thoughts, okay? My biggest thing is, you know, when my kids are really, really frustrating me and all I want to do is yell at them if I catch myself yelling at them. The greatest practice and gratitude I can do is to stop. And this is my greatest parenting hack. Is when my kids are really frustrating me and I'm starting to yell at them. <coughs> Make myself some tea for my throat because I have already yelled at them at this point. And, you know, I need some like lemon honey tea to soothe my throat. Step outside and just be grateful for them. Just fuck, think of every single thing I love about them. Everything about them that makes me smile. Everything about them that's going to help them in the future. You know, when they're wildly independent, it can be so frustrating as a parent, but it's like, that's going to help them later. You know, when they are great at winning arguments, that might help them later. Be grateful for the things that are frustrating you. And it's going to change the way you show up in your everyday life. Okay? Number three, intentionality. You have to stop running on a hamster meal. You ha- hamster meal, hamster wheel. You have to stop running on a hamster wheel. You have to stop just living day by day going with the flow. Okay? You have to set a direction, an intention, a purpose. You have to know where you're going or you're never going to get there. You have to take some time to just pause everything and decide where do I want to be five years from now? What would the dream be? And it doesn't have to be specifics of, you know, like, oh, I want to be making more money. I want to be, I, I have these big goals I want to achieve. It's just how do you want to, like when you envision five years from now, just a typical day five years from now, what's that feel like for you? What do you want that to feel like? Like if you're someone who right now can't bake cookies because you're so stressed and your kitchen's always a mess, Do you dream of, you know, getting to a point where you and your kids are just in the kitchen baking together? What is, what is your motherhood, your personal vision board? What would that goal be? And I'm not telling you go and break it down and figure out how to make that happen in five years. I'm just saying have that vision. Know what you want your life to look like. Have a vision of your own funeral. And we're not going to work backwards and create goals to get us to our own funeral. But envision your own funeral, the service, and what people are going to be saying about you. What do you want people to remember you for when you are gone? That is your intention for your life. When I set this intention five plus years ago, I wanted people to remember me for love and for light. I wanted them to remember me for being a loving person and to just shine my light wherever I went. And at the time that I had that vision, that I decided I wanted that for my life, I was not living in a place like that. Now people might say, I'm, I'm on my way to, you know, being a being of light and love. That I wasn't at that time. Okay? My, my brain was toxic. I was tearing my own self apart. I was negative. Um, I was just, I was a mess. And I was mean. And not to people's faces, but like I had negative thoughts about everyone I met at that time. I was not walking in love. I was not shining a light. I was in the darkness, full of hatred. But I cast that vision. And now five years from now, five years later, I am in a very different place. I'm so much, I'm, I'm very much aligned with what I want for my life. Because I set intention and I remembered it every day. I wrote it in my journal, in my planner every single day. I wrote my affirmations. I wrote my gratitude. I wrote my intention. I reminded myself every single day, what do I want to be? How do I want to feel? What do I want to think about myself? And it kept me going. It kept me moving forward. And now I just feel so distant from who I used to be. And you have to know it's possible. If you feel like you're in the darkest, deepest pit of your life, it is possible to climb out and to stay out. And it's possible to reach back and pull other women out of that pit too. I promise you, if I can, you can. I really, I just, I didn't believe in myself at the beginning. And I do now, okay? 
So those are the big three tips that are going to help you start living a different life and avoid just feeling like crap every single day of your life. And I mean, if you need antidepressants, if you need therapy, get them. But don't stop there. Like you need to take action. You need to apply what you're learning and keep going even when things feel good so that you can get out of that that constant cycle of depressed and now everything's okay, depressed, now everything's okay because I hate the thought that other women feel today the way I felt back then. Take care of yourself, my beautiful, beautiful friend. Okay, now here is like the big development I mentioned about that day back in June of 2020. Okay, I still can't believe it's been three years since I wanted to end my own life. Like, I used to want to die all the time. <laughs> that day I decided I'm going to live and I'm going to do something different. It, it changed. I've never gone back. It's incredible. You have so much power in your own mind. Okay. But anyways, the Stellar's J I saw on my path, the Stellar's J that made me, that made me want to live, that made me realize death was not for me at this time. I did not know when I saw the Stellar's J what a Stellar's J meant as far as um, like mythology and history and symbolism. I had no idea the symbolism of a Stellar's J. It was just my favorite bird. Okay, but here, this is what is so crazy. I found three different like definitions of the meaning of a Stellar's J on, on Google. So if you just Google like spiritual meaning of a Stellar's J, you're going to find these things. Okay, but number one, so there are stories specifically about the Stellar's J in mythology. He is the message of hope in despair and the will to live. The J is willing to teach you fearlessness, adaptability, and survival, but you must be willing to follow its lead. Oh my god. Okay, number two. There's more. Number two. The Stellar's J is symbolic of love, self-appreciation, and fulfilling your calling. It is a message from the spirits for you to keep going. Oh my god. Okay, one more. One more definition here. The Stellar Blue J invites us to develop our courage, explore our capabilities, and make meaningful changes in life. It encourages us to reach new heights and move forward in life with a sense of hope and inspiration. You guys, my gosh, was that not the perfect message? Like, from God to tell me, like, there was so much meaning there that I picked up on intuitively and didn't even know, like, symbolically throughout history, Stellar's J's meant what they mean. And now I'm even more in love with them. Okay, and for this reason, the, the why the Stellar's J was so important in my transition and my decision and my new life, that it means so much to me, I have chosen to make Stellar J 188 a, a, a coupon code for you. Okay, and I'm only sharing it in this episode. <coughs> okay, so if you go to the link provided in this episode, Go to the happy mom method. Go to check out with that. Okay, remember the happy mom method? This is a bundle program that includes unblock your joy, love your home, plus the guide bundle, which is like 12 or 14 different um, printable guides to help you with all different areas like meal planning, decluttering, um, self-love. It's got the happy mom brain in that. Um, this is pretty much like everything I have created, all the really good stuff. The Happy Mom Method is usually $399. This coupon code, StellarJ188, is going to get it to you for $188, which is the full price of one of my courses. Okay, both Unblock Your Joy and Love Your Home are $188 a piece. So this is like a BOGO price where you're going to buy one course and you're going to get the other course plus the guide bundle for free. It's more than a 50% discount off of full price. It's the best deal that you're ever going to find. And I'm not sharing this code anywhere, but here in this episode. So don't forget it. And the discount code 
only works on the $3.99 pay in full option of the Happy Mom Method, which I'm going to link for you in the description of this episode. So yeah, coupon code STELLARJ188. And I really hope that, God, I hope that you can take action in your life and that you can believe that you can change the things that just don't feel good. Okay, my friend, because you are worthy and you are important and you are beautiful. You are so valuable and I am so grateful that you're here. And I really pray every time that I have an episode like this, I so pray that it finds the ears that need to hear it. And I pray that it awakens something in you that needs to be awakened. That you can take action and that you can change the parts of your life that you thought you were stuck in. Because, oh my gosh, life can be so beautiful on the other side. I love you, friend.